Horror games are something that I never played when I was a kid, because who wants to be genuinely terrified while playing a video game? I remember my first time playing Silent Hill, and I literally shit my pants while playing it. Not only because it was 3am, but it was also extremely dark in my room, and at that time I was scared of the dark. But now that I'm a little bit older, and a little bit wiser, and no longer scared of the dark, I feel like I can easily solo some of these games, and the characters in it, all by myself. Today we're going to be going over some horror games that I can definitely survive, and others that I probably can't. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's is a game that you play as a nighttime security guard, or a family-owned pizza restaurant known as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Your main objective in this game is to last from midnight to 6am, without of course being caught by the homicidal animatronics that wander around the pizzeria at night. Now my first question is, why did you take that job? Why was that something that you wanted to do? You know that these animatronics roam the halls at night, and yet you took that job. That right there is the biggest mistake. The second mistake is knowing how much you're probably getting paid. You're probably getting paid no more than $5 an hour, yet you took a job where all of the other other previous security guards have gone missing. Yet you decided that was a good job that you were gonna take. Yeah, see me, that, that that's not gonna work for me. Me personally, how I'm surviving Five Nights at Freddy's, it's very easy. Number one, I'm not taking the job. Once you told me that there was animatronics roaming around the halls all by themselves and eating people, supposedly, yeah, I'm good. That's just not a job that I wanna take. Number two, if for some reason I was forced into taking that job, I needed that $5 an hour from midnight to 6 a.m., okay, cool, how am I surviving? I'm A, deadbolt in the doors. Yeah, the animatronics might be strong, but that may be able to keep them out a little bit longer. Number two, I'm strapping up, if you know what I mean. Granted, they might not do too much to them, but maybe it'll scare them a little bit, you know, to stop messing with me. And number three, which might be the hardest part of surviving this whole thing, is I would try to find, like, an animatronic head or something like that and put that on and just sit in my chair. Probably fall asleep until 6 a.m. and get woken up by some of the day workers that end up working there during the day, which is the shift that you really want. Five Nights at Freddy's would be an easy solo for me. Granny. Granny is a game where you're locked inside of a grandma's house. The whole main objective of this game is to find all of the keys and get out of the house before Granny kills you. And the only places you can hide is in the closets or under the bed. You drop something on the floor, yeah, she's gonna hear you. The whole main objective is to be super quiet, find the keys, and get out. Now granted, Granny in the games, yeah, she's pretty strong and powerful because somehow she's one-punching every single person with that giant baboon mallet she's got. But other than that, how are you getting pieced by a grandmother? Nine times out of ten, if I hit a grandma with a right hook, she is cooked. Obviously, I'm not doing that, but I'm saying if I was in that and all she had was that club, I'm putting putting my forearm up and I'm hitting her right in her face. That's pretty simple. Nine times out of ten, I am knocking grandma's teeth all the way into the back of her throat and she's done for. I'm not gonna be quiet. I'm not gonna be this. Now, if you said grandma's strapped or she's got a knife, okay, I I'll be quiet. I'll tiptoe around the whole house, try to find the keys and make my way out of the front door because that's the main objective of this whole entire game. You're not gonna catch me hiding in closets or anything like that. And if I did, if granny was real powerful and I had to hide in the closets, I would make some noise. Then I would jump in the closet, wait for her to stand in front of the closet door hit her with the closet door, hit her with a right hook, and call it a day. I'm just gonna go downstairs, unlock the door, and walk right out. I might even make myself a sandwich. Because you know grannies, they usually got some decent food in the house. I am going to piece granny up. How is that supposed to be scary? Grandmothers don't scare me. Except that one grandma from that horror movie who tells people that they're gonna die and then climbs on the ceiling. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. That grandmother is terrifying. But this granny is just a regular old lady with a mallet in her hand who seems to be keeping you trapped in her house for some weird reason. She's getting packed up. I'm sorry. No hate to all the grandmothers, but... I'm good. Until Dawn. Until Dawn is a game where you take control of eight young adults and survive on Blackwood Mountain until you're rescued at dawn. You pretty much follow the story between the group and make decisions based on what you want to do in the game. You as the eight characters are stuck on a remote ski lodge, seemingly being hunted by a mysterious monster, which we all think is a Wendigo, because that's kind of what it looks like. Now this is one of those experiences you don't want to be stuck on a mountain with me. If it's me to survive or if it's you to survive, I am choosing myself to survive every single time. Every decision that I make and every decision that I made while playing until dawn was to keep my character alive. You could be my best friend, you could be my wife, you could be this, that, and the fifth. Chris is surviving. I am 100% surviving until dawn. I am gonna run this way, run that way, hide here, hide there, and make every decision possible to make sure you all get packed up before I do. Now, nine times out of ten, I won't be making the right decision for you, but I'm definitely gonna be making the right decision for me. And I know that sounds super selfish, but you have to think about it from an outside perspective. I am stuck in a remote ski lodge with eight people, and we all have to survive until dawn. There's a mysterious killer creature out there for some reason coming with sound and all this other stuff trying to kill me and all my friends. You could take them. You're not touching me. There is no humanly possible way I am sacrificing myself for absolutely anybody in this game. I'm sorry. You do not want to be trapped with me anywhere, anytime, or anything. I will offer you up as fodder just to make sure I am good. And like I said, I know that sounds selfish, but you have to think about it. You're stuck at a remote ski lodge with eight of your friends. Would you prefer them or you to go? Nine times out of ten, even if you're going to say out loud, oh, I would, I would, I would make sure 
sure they're good. I'll be, no, you, no, you, no, you wouldn't. Deep down inside, you'd be like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you go do that. You go do that. They start screaming, you run the other way. You just won't say it, but I will. I 100% know that that segment made me sound crazy, but I damn well know all of you would do the same exact thing and say the same exact thing I just said. If you were stuck in that situation. Poppy Playtime. Poppy Playtime is a horror puzzle game where players investigate an abduction that happened at a toy factory. Your goal is to solve the mystery of what actually happened. Now, the first time I played Poppy Playtime, I was like, all right, yo, this game is really cool. You know, you're doing puzzles, you're doing this, you start hearing weird noises and all that other stuff. And then Huggy Wuggy comes out and he's got these crazy sharp teeth and he wants to kill you. This is by far one of those games that I would 100% not survive. I'm stuck in a toy factory all by myself. There's a ton of different monsters. You got like Mommy Mommy or something like that. And now with the newest game, you have all of these other characters who want to do the same thing to you. Nobody is trying to protect you. It's not like Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach where some of the characters are trying to protect you like Glamrock Freddy. This game has nothing. You have no plot armor. You have no nothing. As soon as Huggy Wuggy sees you and he's turned on to that demon time, you're done for. Like I said, there's a ton of other characters like this pink mommy thing. There's a dog now and this, that, and the fit. There's way too many characters for you to try and survive in a toy factory where they know it way better than you. You're just there to investigate. You got these cool little blop, blop, blops. I quite literally have no idea what that is, but you know what I mean, where you're doing the color match and everything like that. The game itself is cool. Me personally, though, as soon as you hear Huggy Wuggy start stomping and this and that and the fifth, you're done for. There's no weapons in this game. There's no way to protect yourself except to run. And you know me, I don't run. I am pretty much 100% getting packed up in Poppy Playtime. Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight is an asymmetrical horror game where one person picks a killer and the other four are survivors, trying to escape the killer and avoid being killed. Death is of course not an escape. Now DBD is one of those games that is very skill gap based and very hard. The main goal of this game is to run, throw down pallets and things like that. Now there is a slew of characters that can easily kill you. A Huntress, she throws the axe. And if the Huntress is good enough, she will hit you nine times out of 10. The other main factor in this game is that you have to run. As I just previously stated, I do not run. How am I gonna run around Around a pallet and outrun Jason Voorhees. Granted, he doesn't really run, but he can teleport in the game. As I said, the Huntress, she throws an axe, and she's got like four of them on her body at all times before she's got to replenish it. DBD is a very skill-based game as well. I'm not very skilled at much things. If you were to transport me into a character inside of Dead by Daylight, nobody would pick me one. And two, if they did, they would be like, damn, why did I pick Chris? There's no way I'm surviving this. Stamina, all the way low. Intelligence, all the way low. The only thing I have is strength. And you don't really need strength in Dead by Daylight besides throwing down a pallet, which most people are already doing with the lowest amount of strength in the game. Me as a Dead by Daylight character would 100% not work. And that's just me being completely honest with myself. That is the list of horror games that I could easily survive. If you guys want to see a part two, comment down below. Let me know what else you guys want to see on the channel. I'm currently trying to clean it up and start making some higher quality stuff. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this. I'm going to try to post three to four times a week. And once things start churning a little bit more, we're going to start posting probably every day. But as I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to smack a like on it. That'd be greatly appreciated. Comment down below what else you guys want to see on the channel. And with all of that being said, guys, my name is Chris. And of course, I will catch you guys on the next one.